Well, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I, uh, and I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and love to all God's children gathered in this space and in all spaces in our great big world. Chicken Jesus, <coughs> how often have I desired to have your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing? Chicken Jesus, a big, fluffy brood hen with their wings stretched as far as they possibly can go, going throughout the landscape prodding all her chicks to come underneath the protective wing she offers. In this piece of scripture, Jesus is being told that he needs to leave the city, to run away, for Herod wants to kill him. But Jesus is adamant. His work here continues until he determines the time to leave. Jesus has lots to do before he continues his journey into Jerusalem. And in the midst of death threats and knowing his time will soon come to an end, Jesus is desperately trying to save all God's children, no matter their actions. I think Timothy Shapiro stated this illustration of saving all God's children best when he said, Jesus compares himself to the mother hen, whose love cannot be deferred by anything her little chick does or fails to do. Jesus is the mother hen who folds the covers down on the bed, fluffs up the pillow, and at the same time says, don't ever let me catch you doing that again. What a wonderful way to describe how we are held accountable for our actions and the beauty that is the mercy of God. Last week, if you were here, you heard that you were enough. That you were so enough. You were unbelievably enough. This week, that enough is demonstrated here as Jesus tries to protect his children, including a crazy fox named Herod, who wanted to kill him and any prophet who threatened his power. But they do not come to him. Jesus did not and does not care if they were Pharisees, if they are tax collectors, or beggars, or rich, or poor, Jesus knew God's love extended to everyone. When the fox, whether that be Herod, or a fox called addiction, or a fox called pornography, or a fox, whatever you might call it, comes to you, Jesus chooses to stand between you and that fox, putting his 
own life on the line so that you might live because you are loved and you are enough. We are all God's children. We are all extended, we are all extended God's love and we are all connected into one body. We are all redeemed by the one blood shed and the one body broken. Brothers and sisters, all means all. It's not everyone except all means those who choose to hurt us, those whom we struggle with, those whose ideas seem extreme and dangerous. They too are our brothers and sisters, and those spread out chicken wings are there for them also. However, they might not know that. There are so many of our brothers and sisters believing today that they are too bad for God's love. They have done too many terrible things to be a recipient of that precious love of God. They have been told over and over by so-called Christian churches that they are not worthy of living a life with God's love and grace. We are responsible, my friends, for getting that word of love out to all God's children, whether or not we think they deserve those gracious gifts of our Heavenly Father. And I know there are brothers and sisters out there who think we don't deserve God's gifts because we invite all to come to the Lord's table. Because we believe women pro can proclaim in the pulpit God's <laughs> words. And because we believe God's love is for all. We love those who don't love us. We are in our journey of Lent. And Lent is the time to reflect and see how these words resonate in your soul and in your spirit. And how can you live out God's love for all in your life? What if they itch in your soul and in your spirit? Then good for you. Good for you for being honest with yourself and with God. Use Lent to wrestle with those feelings and any others that come up. Don't shy away from the itch. Scratch at it until you feel some relief. Pray, read, and talk to others about how and why you feel that itch. This time in our faith journey is especially set aside just for those kinds of itches. Embrace this time for yourselves. See how the chicken lays down her life in order to keep the fox from entering your hen house. Praise be to God. <laughs>